Eastman is one of the coolest dads around. He has authored several books, was the producer and podcast host for Adventures in Odyssey, and writes for Clubhouse Magazine. And his persona, Dr. Fizzlebop, uses science experiments to teach kids about God's amazing design for everything around them. Now, his book that we're talking about today, Faith and Science with Dr. Fizzlebop, features 52 easy experiments kids and parents can do together, each one connecting to a devotional and prayer. So hello, Brock. Thank you so much for being on The Bookmark. Hey, Karen. Thanks for having me today. I'm excited. Well, actually, it's fantastic to be here today. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if I should call you Dr. Fizzlebop, the doc, or Brock, but we'll kind of go back and forth, I'm sure. <laughs> it totally works. All right, so let's start with a question that I know you get asked a lot. How can you believe in God and trust science at the same time? Yeah, well, you know, it's, for me, it's really simple. I think for others, it can be more of a challenge, whereas where the book comes in. But, you know, I've always believed in a creative designer, a God who made this whole world from the very beginning. He designed all of it. So it's impossible for me to not believe that all these things we see, how a blood cell functions in our body, how a honeybee and a flower work together to produce honey and to live and to create life, all that is because God designed it that way. So for me, the science behind all of it is just part of God's amazing design. So it's pretty simple for me. Uh, the challenge is when you talk to others who maybe don't have that perspective. Do you, what kind of came first for you? Like, were you more into science and that kind of thing? Or did you become a, a Christian first? Like, what was first for you personally? Uh, I, I was blessed enough to grow up in a, in a home uh, that was focused on God and centered there. I grew up in a really small town in Illinois. Um, and so, yeah, my church, my, uh, my faith was always at the very beginning. And I know others haven't had that. And so more so, science just came a part of how do I teach my kids about who our great God is? And, you know, they're often, they're, a lot of stuff is coming at them every day, right? What they're learning in school, what, what the media is saying to them. And sometimes they're saying, hey, uh, you know, you can't be a Christian and also uh, practice science. But that's just not true. And when you look at it from that perspective, that God is the great designer, the creator of all of it, it's pretty easy to see how he put it all into play. So that's really the science part came in actually because I'm a dad. I am a marketing guy. Honestly, a marketing guy, that's what I really love, science, uh, but I'm learning. <laughs> well, I want to talk a bit more about the marketing side a little bit later, because it definitely yes. did stick out to me. But first of all, we're still on this track of, you know, schooling and education and stuff. Tell me briefly about Mr. Bill. You mentioned him in your acknowledgments in the book. I love it. Okay, so, uh, wow, one of the kindest, coolest, just Man, easygoing, funny teachers I ever had in high school. And, uh, you know, I, I teased Mr. Bill. Actually, I saw him this summer when I was back in Illinois. And uh, he actually went through this book and helped review the concepts and the science behind it just to help me make sure it's accurate, just like he did with my homework when I was in high school, right? So he tolerated me as a student then, and he's still helping me learn today. And, you know, that's what a teacher is, someone who not only guides you from childhood, but also stays as a mentor in your life. And Mr. Bill has been that, and I am just so grateful for his feedback, insight, his expertise, uh, but also taking the time on a student who maybe wasn't as focused on science when he should have been uh, back in high school. So just an amazing amazing man, an amazing guy. Yeah. Yeah. I had some teachers like that too. <laughs> Very thankful for them. Mr. Bill, what a great name. I mean, you can't help but love the idea of Mr. Bill. Everybody needs a Mr. Bill. Now in your parenting and your teaching experience, what does get kids excited and curious about science and even the Bible? Yeah. Well, you know, kids, I, I'm a dad of four kids. I was 12, 10, eight, and six. And they are naturally curious, right? We are an amazing world. There's so much happening around us. It's wondrous. And like me, my kids are curious. And so as a dad, they're asking me questions. But kids don't want an answer like, well, that's just how it is. Or God made it that way. They want to know more. They, they're smart. They're, they're investigating everything. And so as a dad, I want to provide them those answers in a way that they can understand, but also see the beauty of what is around them and how it was created and designed. So my kids are curious. So I think that's just a natural tendency of kiddos. It becomes how we engage that and how we train that and teach them to continue to be curious, to seek out absolute truth and the right answers, um, and to get those answers from people they trust, right? Not just from what they might read here or, or what a friend might think, right? Find adults and mentors and people in their lives, Sunday school teachers, who can give you those absolute truths and those answers, uh, people that they respect. And parents are in that spot, for sure. Wow. I feel like I've had a few, this is like a running theme. I've had a few of my Wednesday bookmark interviews bring up the conversation of, you know, adults not losing that childlike wonder or that reminder that God is in everything. Like, I think as parents, we can get 
especially if we grew up as Christians or even just were bombarded by life, right? I think we yeah. kind of have a tendency to, to not see those things. So I think what I'm hearing you say is like, as parents, we have a role to play in, in getting kids excited about it. Absolutely. I, I thrive off my kids. In fact, I've, I've written several other books and you'll see a couple of them are co-written with my kids because most of those books are based on a moment in life. And I'm just going to give you a quick example. There's a board book called Bedtime on Noah's Ark. And it came from a moment of me and my little guy, Declan, doing our brushing our teeth routine of doing teeth like a tiger, teeth like a hippo. I've got our mouth open and, then and brush your tongue like a giraffe. That became a book because as a parent, as a, I was trying to figure out how do I get my, my kiddo to do his, brush his teeth and want to do his teeth, make it something fun. Kids love pretending to be in animals. They explore their imagination every day. And so for that moment, every night, we would become animals while we brushed our teeth. And that's where that book came from. And that is how I really try to do my, my writing and my creativity because my kids inspire me to be imag imaginative, to wonder about the world around me. And so honestly, I feed off of that, off my kiddos' own creativity and wonder. I love that. I love that. Well, you may have already answered my next question, but I want to know <laughs> where and I guess when you came up with the character Dr. Fizzlebob, because I can see here that you're a marketing guy, because the <laughs> brand, seriously, the brand is consistent. You've got a lot of components, elements, resources on your website. I know your YouTube channel is going to be growing. Um, and, you know, you've obviously familiarized yourself with this character, but where did it start? Back us up. Yeah, all the way back in 2016. So I was sitting with uh, Jesse Floria of Clubhouse Magazine, uh, Focus on Families uh, Magazine, talking about an idea for a column that I had. And I said, I'd like to do like an experiment column. And I've got this word fizzlebop in my head. What do you think? He's like, oh, let's give it a go. So we started with three or four columns a year. And then last year, or a year and a half ago, when COVID hit, uh, Linda Howard at Tyndale approached me about being the host for their summer camp, online VBS type summer style camp. And I said, of course, yeah, I got nothing else to do. Let's do this. I did, but I never say no. So I died full in and we also needed somebody to handle the science part of that, that education, of that, that experience for each week. And I said, you know, I've got this character. His name's Dr. Fizzbop. And if you let me, I'd love to bring him to life. And so he did two episodes in summer camp. He came back again this year for summer camp and he came to life. And that's where that started to be that when I brought my kids kids on stage. It was just a little stage in my middle school where Mr. Bill taught, or actually taught the high school, but in my hometown of Eureka. And we, we shot it there. And my kids were engaged with me on the experiments. And as they were doing them, I'm like, there's something here. There's something about parents being with their kids, experimenting, doing culture, learning scientific principles, but then connecting it back to God and the ultimate design. And so that honestly, that was it. It was this little crux of these little things. I am a firm believer God opens doors in our path that we can't ever see coming. He knows our plan. He opens those doors. He guides us. We make all kinds of mistakes in our life, all kinds. God has a plan. And so this, I would have never told you I'd be here even a year and a half ago, right? But God knew this would come to be. And so through inspiration, creativity, and partnership, here we are with Dr. Fizzlebop as uh, right in front of you, living and breathing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Okay, so then my last question, just as we wrap up, I do want you to walk us through what an example of one of these experiment yeah. devotions would look like for a family. Kind of like, where do your ideas come from? And then just quickly kind of an overview of what each chapter, each devotion would be. Yeah, absolutely. So like you said, we got 52 experiments and five, so there's 57 total, five holiday ones. And the idea is here, you know, exp there's experience all over, but kids look around the world like, how does that work? So we try to look at simple, basic experience. We say super simple science in a lot of these experiments. How can we show kids concepts that they're going to learn in school and then connect them back to something, a story about God? Because what I want is, so I'll, I'll give you an example. What I want is I want when they're doing learning about erosion in school, that they're thinking about Matthew, the book of Matthew, and uh, building a house on the solid rock or the sand. And there's an experiment that ties that to erosion. In Matthew, were they talking about how erosion works? No. But the idea is that I want kids in school as they're doing erosion to think, oh, there's a principle about that. There's, a, there's an idea about that. Same with Noah's Ark and rainbows, which we do a really cool experiment. So when you dig into the book, you're going to get an intro. Then you're going to get a Fizzlebop supply list. And from there, we're going to have the actual experiment, walking through step-by-step step how to accomplish the experiment. After that, you have a moment of, here's what's actually happening. Dr. Fizzlebop, what's happening? And that's where we kind of give you some explanation of the scientific principles. That's where Mr. Bill came in a lot, really helped me out. Uh, and from there, we have a devotional time where we talk about a principle or a concept in the Bible that connects to the theme of that, that experiment. 
And lastly, we have a moment of reflection where moms and dads and kids talk about the experiment, but also the devotional, and then it ties up with a prayer. The idea being we want to take them through this fun experiment, engage them with the Bible, good stories, what God is doing, and then give families a time to reflect and connect together around those principles. So that's the short in the nutshell. <laughs> I love it. Hey, it helps you talk fast because we got it in there, right? <laughs> I love it. Love your energy. Honestly, I don't think there's anyone else doing this in this Christian space. So it's just so appreciate it. His YouTube channel launches later this fall with how-to videos from his lab. Uh, the book is Faith and Science with Dr. Fizzlebop, really drawing families together for fun, for laughs, and to deepen their faith and understanding of our amazing creator. So Brock Eastman, a.k.a. Dr. Fizzlebop, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. This was fantastic. I so appreciate it.